Hello there. It's time for me to announce my pick for the Dog of the Week, where I pick the worst things I saw on the internet all week long. And it's a tie. The Supreme Court worked very hard to earn this award this week, and I'll get to my thoughts on their terrible rulings in a moment. First, I will give my prize for the Dog of the Week to Jimmy Dore. He, a man of over a million subscribers, has spent a number of years peddling anti-vaccine, pro-Russia, pro-far-right rhetoric in the guise of being a leftist. And because he originates a show from Hollywood, he has been looking for mainstream celebrities who are willing to, once and for all, shut down the narrative that COVID-19 is the deadliest disease since polio and that vaccines can actually protect you from it. That's more than the mere narrative, it's the truth. Having two vaccines and a booster can prove it. Of course, mainstream is a word I never use to describe any of the celebrities Jimmy Dore has found to peddle his anti-vaccine agenda so far. It's a word I'm certainly not going to use to describe Rob Schneider, who made his last appearance in mainstream celebrity circles, at least, at the very least, non-conservative celebrity circles, when he got the starring role in a 2016 computer animated film called, uh, well... Uh... Lemmings, look out! Geez, they don't call this place a concrete jungle for nothing. Norm of the North. Which kicked off a franchise that I'm told is the worst thing to happen to human beings since the invention of the guillotine. Not to be outdone, Mr. Schneider in 2023 is coming out with a bluey ripoff, a far-right comedy special, and an appearance on the Jimmy Dore Show, where he got billed as a liberal, which is hilarious considering that he's hardly a liberal at all, and had the uh, remarkable audacity to like it people tell you to get the COVID-19 vaccine to, you're not going to believe this, the Nazis. You know, there was a lie in, in like, um, in, edu in educational circles, in academia, that, uh, you know, Germany was a lot like us, and um, and that the, this thing, if these situations happened, it that's what uh, started. And he said that wasn't true. It wasn't the economic, it wasn't just the economic devastation that happened there. Um, it was also the, one of the cornerstones of European society. One of the foundational thinking was anti-Semitism, so that that came out. And I've always agreed that, like, well, that couldn't happen here. But now you realize it absolutely could. The treatment of the, quote, unvaccinated. And, like, when you saw Jimmy Kimmel on on um, on TV saying, like, don't help these people and Pierce Morgan, is that his name? Yeah. Uh, it just – it was uh, – and George Clooney and Sean Penn. I went, like, these guys – would have been very comfortable still performing for like in Berlin in the late 30s, you know. I think th this is it. It isn't that far removed from like uh, that that um, you know the same thing as as anti-Semitism, in my opinion. You know, it it was scary. Um, it did expose the little Hitlers amongst us, didn't well, there's, it? There's a there's a saying. I don't know if you've ever heard the saying. Scratch a liberal, and underneath there's a fascist. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> no. I, Oh, boy. That has got to be the most asinine apples to oranges remark ever uttered by any anti-vaxxer. I am speaking as a Jew. It defies any attempt at fact check. It defies any attempt to debate this guy on anything. It defies any ability for me to take him seriously. And then we get into an actual tweet of Jimmy Dore's from Thursday afternoon, in which he writes, I guess it's over for Fauci and the Covidians when mainstream celebrities are ripping his obvious bullshit. The mainstream celebrity in question was... Dana Carvey! I don't think Team Fauci has much to worry about with that clip. Dana Carvey hasn't been a mainstream celebrity in 21 years. His status as what ended all the way back in 2002 when he made a movie called The Master of Disguise. You may have seen the trailer for it on a lot of VHS tapes and DVDs if you're of my generation. Dana Carvey. I am Prince Lalejama. Swarm, Terry Swarm. <laughs> Are 
you a member of the Turtle Club? Am I not turtly enough for the Turtle Club? <laughs> Tell me when you my show. No, no, no. Where'd he go? <laughs> the master of disguise. I think it's time for you to go. This is what you're doing. This is what I want you to do. Did you just tell me to shut up? Yes. And that movie was a master of getting trashed by just about everyone, giving Bo Derek a fifth main Razzie nomination, and being considered one of the worst movies ever made. It also seems to have been a master of permanently throwing Mr. Carby in the D-list ghetto, for which emerges this exchange between him and fellow D-lister David Spade. I miss COVID. I know. Dude, dude, you know what I knew? There was trouble <laughs> when anyone that came to our country didn't have to get a vaccine. And I go, mm -hmm. if you're telling me I can't go to work, but everyone, everyone coming in doesn't have to get one, I go. Well, once we found out, when Fauci said, okay, I'm sorry, but if you've had two boosters and two vaccines, you can get and give COVID to another guy who's had five vaccines and four boosters. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a vaccine and a booster? I don't know, it's just more vaccine, but booster sounds better. Anyway, a guy with 25 vaccines would get and give COVID to another guy with 25 <laughs> vaccines. That's why I'm introducing the daily COVID shot. Every day you get a shot. <laughs> By the time you get to your car, you got no immunity. But it's a beautiful 39 seconds. <laughs> and therefore, I established my newly formed requirements for celebrities seeking to spread COVID-19 and vaccine disinformation. Requirement number one, you have to be on the D-list. Requirement number two, you have to have made at least five years past the point of anyone sane actually caring about what you're going to do after your last movie takes. Requirement number three, your only remaining audience must consist of far riders and those adjacent to them. Well, now that we got those requirements out of the way, I might as well talk about the Supreme Court for a bit. Having already got a Roe vs. Wade last year, its 6-3 conservative majority killed off affirmative action, stripping blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans of any actual opportunity to be successful, and shut down the Biden administration's plan to cancel student debt where are you permanently in debt if you're in college? These are absolutely hideous rulings, and they leave no wonder as to why the Supreme Court itself opened the week at an all-time low 29% approval rating. Kay Ivers, of course, will be inclined to tell you that Bernie Sanders, AOC, Nina Turner, Marianne Williamson, Cornell West, Elizabeth Warren, and many other lefties are to blame for this, but they've all condemned these rulings, and I'll shoot down their would-be claim that Bernie is doing nothing to respond to them. Bernie Sanders, on the day the ruling on student loan debt was made, described it as legally unsound and asked President Biden to cancel student loan debt anyway. Good on him for showing the increasingly conservative SCOTUS that the awful rulings it's made recently are worth fighting to overturn. This is Jesse Coffey.